Ready, Jeremy? You're on. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I'd like to call the village board for Tuesday, December 15th to order roll call, please. Trustee Williams. Here. Trustee Paul. Here. Trustee Zerbel. Here. Trustee Krieger. Here. Trustee Kabaki. Here. Trustee Fluki. Here. President Kardoski. Here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remember our men and women throughout the world in uniform. I need, I have no changes to the agenda. I need a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. <sighs> motion carried. I need action on the minutes for the regular meeting of November 24th. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, motion to approve the special village board meeting for December 1st, those minutes. So move. Second. Motion and a second to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. I need a motion to approve the village board minutes for the special meeting of December 8th, 2020. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Comments from the public must be limited to items not on the agenda. Must state your name and address. Limited to five minutes. The board's role is to listen and not discuss the item. Personnel issues cannot be discussed nor individuals named. And the board is not able to take action at this meeting. Any comments from the public on items not on the agenda? Hearing none, we will move on. Number seven, written communications and or announcements. Um, I received an update from Kate Green. At that's the, on the agenda. That's on the agenda? Okay, never that's mind. That's on the agenda, yep. Then we're good. Okay, I have two. Uh, first of all, I would like to announce to everybody that our employee of the year for this year is our deputy clerk, Beth Stein. Um, she did an, an amazing job with four elections and a lot of legal work that she had to do. So there were many, many weekends that she was here working late. So she is our employee of the year. And then also I have to read a letter that is addressed to the citizens of the village of Ashwabanan and President Mary Kurdusky. Dear fellow citizens and President Kurdusky, with mixed emotions and heavy heart, I hereby tender my resignation as Ashwabanan Village Clerk Treasurer, effective Monday, January 4, 2021 at 12.01 a.m. I had never imagined leaving the Clerk Treasurer position under any circumstances, but I leave knowing that I shall remain vigilant serving Ashwabanan and all of Brown County in my new role as the new duly elected Brown County Clerk. I leave the office of the clerk treasurer in capable hands with committed people who serve with great distinction. They are second to none. I shall miss each of them both personally and professionally. In closing, allow me to convey that it has been an honor and a privilege to serve the village these past six plus years. To quote, to quote President elect Abraham Lincoln, when departing Springfield, Illinois for Washington, DC, to assume the mantle of the presidency. My friends, no one, not in my situation, can appreciate my feeling of sadness at this parting. To this place and the kindness of these people, I owe everything. Your obedient servant, Patrick Moynihan, Jr., Clerk Treasurer. So, Pat has resigned. Um, not yet. <laughs> well, as of. as of January 4th, so. Thank you, Patrick. Um, Thank you. I tried. So this is his last meeting, right? Yes. This is the last, unless we have another extra special oh, meeting. Oh, please do it. <laughs> <laughs> five in well, a row, huh? Maybe about five or six of them, I would think. There right? you go. We'll get money's worth out there of There you him. go. That's right. 
So you know, I, uh, Patrick has done an excellent job. He's uh, served the community with uh, honor and distinction, and he's uh, is about as steady as you can get. I watched him work at the county level and uh, did a great job there, uh, commanding the board meetings there and that type of thing. So, um, kudos to you and. Thank you. Well, you're, I'm sure you're going to be very successful, and thanks for all you've done for Ashwabadan. Thank you. I won't be far away. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. Number eight, the 2020 Community Excellence Award. So I have Michelle and Holly from Fortify Bank here, and um, I'm going to present them, and Patrick yep. will read their proclam pro proclamation. Proclamation honoring Fortify Bank 2020 Community Excellence Award. Whereas the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Ashwaubenon wishes to annually honor an organization or person who makes extraordinary efforts to improve our community. And whereas Fortify Bank was originally formed in 1876 as First National Bank and previously maintained a bank branch on Oneida Street before constructing a new branch building on Cormier Road in 2019 to serve the citizens and businesses of Ashwaubenon and Northeast Wisconsin. And whereas Fortify Bank has been involved in continuing the betterment of Ashwaubenon since joining our community by offering actions such as financial sponsorships of Ashwaubenon Parks, Recreation and Forestry Department food truck rallies. And whereas during these food rallies, Fortify Bank personnel personally volunteered their respective time to assist the village on seven occasions between 2019 and 2020, thus ensuring these special events were accomplished with great enthusiasm and community mindedness. And whereas Fortify Bank is committed is a committed community partner that has demonstrated its capacity and willingness to support the village of Ashwaubenon, both through the acts of their employees and investment in the community. And now therefore, be it resolved, with the deepest of appreciation of these efforts and community outreach, the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Ashwaubenon does hereby recognize and award Fortify Bank the 2020 Community Excellence Award. Thank you to the bank. Things like that wouldn't be possible without sponsorship. So great community partner. Okay, number nine, action on consent agenda. Action on the operator's license. Moved to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the operator license. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Number 10, action items. 10A, appointment of village clerk. So back in the spring, we had a referendum. We've always had an elected clerk in the village of Ashwabnan. And uh, we did a referendum and the citizens voted to allow us to have an appointed clerk. So we went through the application process, the interview process and the village board has selected Chris Teske as our village clerk. And um, I will let Tony and Joel add any comments if they'd like, but I'm gonna need a, after their comments, a motion to appoint Chris Teske as our village clerk. I can go ahead. Uh, as, you, as most of the board is aware, we went through a, a rather lengthy process to uh, seek applicants, solicit applications for this position. I think we had over a couple hundred applicants for this particular position, of which we then interviewed a select few of those qualified candidates. Uh, 
uh, and then most recently whittled that down and had an interview with the board uh, for the for the two finalists. Uh, we feel that Chris, obviously, with her experience working with the city of Green Bay, um, certainly a much larger organization um, and and certainly a complex operation there, uh, would certainly fit in very well here in Ashwaubenon and continue to take uh, what Patrick has done in the clerk's office and continue to move that forward. So Chris is our recommendation for appointment for this position. Does anybody want to make that? All right, if there's no other questions, I'll move to approve the appointment of Chris Testy as village clerk. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to appoint Chris Teske as our village clerk. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 10B, action on appeal of denied operator's license for Brandon Eland. Patrick. Uh, within your packets, there's a communication from Brandon Elin, who is appealing his denied operator's license application. Mr. Elin is in attendance. Should you have any questions for him this evening? And I believe you brought a guest with you. If, if, if uh, we, we could always suspend the rules if she wants to speak as well. But uh, Mr. Elin, if you want to come forward and the board will entertain any questions of you. Okay. Uh, did, did you want to speak first? Uh, Brandon, pull the mic up to your phone, please. Uh, your mouth, please. State your name and address, please, for the uh, record also. Brandon Elin, uh, 1099 Thorndale Street. Uh, when I was originally applying for my uh, license, I wasn't sure that I had to put down my ticket on there because it happened before I was 18, and uh, that I didn't know that I didn't have to put that. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Brandon? Have you applied, uh, Brandon, anywhere for a job that requires the license? Yes, I uh, currently work at Grand Central Station. At where? Uh, Grand Central Station. Which one? Uh, Shell, over by Stadium, the one that just opened up. Okay. 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 This came in front of the Public Works and Protection Committee. Uh, we denied the uh, applicant because of the severity of the uh, of the uh, conviction and being as close as the uh, time that it has taken place as of 2 8 2020 uh, we had a description of a, a couple other things that the chief gave us so I uh, I'm still going to hold to denying the application if there's no, no other questions, I'll move to deny the application. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to deny the uh, operator's license. Is there any more discussion on this? Yeah, um, Gary mentioned chief, chief. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, the reason for my denial was um, <clears throat> he omitted the uh, information on the first application uh, he professed to admitting that because um, he didn't uh, he didn't uh, put it on there um, because he wanted to better himself. Um, the other reason for my denial was that uh, in reading the reports, he also was not truthful with officers uh, um, during, at the scene during the citation, um, and I also wanted to uh, deny it based on the fact that it was uh, based on our guidelines. Um, this fell within one year um, of application, and it was a drug conviction. So basically, we had the not putting information on the application, which is an automatic denial. Uh, we had the misinformation or um, untruthfulness with officers on the scene, and then the proximity to the application was the reason for my denial. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion and a second to deny the operator's license. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, 10C, action on Class B beer license, Class B liquor license to Boomerang Management, Inc., DBA, Epic Event Center. 
As noted in your package, Boomerang Management Inc. Uh, doing business as Epic Event Center is nearing completion of refurbishing the former uh, Gordman's Department Store at 2351 Holmgren. As such, uh, the entertainment venue seeks approval of a Class B beer, Class B liquor license to offer its patrons. This did pass Public Works unanimously. Okay, any discussion? Questions? This is for the new um, concert venue that used to be the Gordman's. Uh, there's no questions. Move to approve the Class B liquor, Class C, uh, Class B liquor license for Boomerang Management uh, Inc. doing business as Epic Event Center. Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the Class B beer license, Class B liquor license for Boomerang Management, DBA Epic Event Center. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 10D, action on requested site plan review for extendable screening system at 831 Armed Forces Drive, parcel VA-41. Aaron. The uh, requested site plan review is for uh, an extendable screening system similar to one that was recently approved and installed on Hinkle Field. Uh, this would be located on Nitschke Field, also on Armed Forces Drive. The uh, poles uh, on Hinkle Field are approximately 30 feet uh, or 33 feet. Uh, these would be 23 feet, so a little bit lower. Uh, again, intended to keep uh, unscrupulous teams from uh, spying uh, on the Packers uh, practices. Uh, in terms of uh, site plan review committee and plan commission, both recommended approval uh, with the condition that the uh, screening be lowered, be raised only when there are closed practices. Otherwise, the screening is to remain lowered. Uh, Aaron Popke is uh, available online if you have questions for him. Otherwise, I'd be happy to answer any questions for you as well. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> this past uh, site plan and plan board. As Aaron, said, uh, Aaron and Mary said, they both passed the site plan and uh, public works. Uh, they uh, are identical to the ones that are on the uh, practice field on Oneida Street. Um, I don't, we didn't see any problem with the comeback that they brought us the last time with the uh, visibility of the poles and the, uh, the screening. Uh, the screening was up the other day, I was told by a few people. I did not see it. Uh, I did not hear any bad comments about it. So uh, seeing it's a, a duplication of what uh, we already are experiencing, uh, if there's no other questions, I'll move to approve as written. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve it. Aaron, did you want to make any comments? Uh, thank you, Mary. Good evening, everyone. Sorry I didn't have a chance to be with you in person tonight, but I would just say thank you for the consideration, uh, and and uh, we will indeed have these down when they're not in use and uh, folded up tightly to be as compact as possible. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? There yeah, uh, I got oh, uh, go it. Aaron, um, if the New England Patriots are the only team in the NFL that uh, cheats, why don't we just uh, do something temporary on the years that they play here? <laughs> just kidding. That is not going um, in the minutes. I'll, uh, thank you. And I'm not a Patriot fan either. I'm a Packer fan. <laughs> I, I appreciate the uh, the moment of levity. Yep. <laughs> Sure, they have a losing Your season. Your words, not mine. <laughs> they have no, a losing I... season, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, as we often say, we uh, you can never be too careful. I mean, I, I I won't speak to that specifically, but as we know, we just it's an abundance of caution and confidentiality. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, Ted, Thank you. Um, update on the PAC. We have, it, so it's nice to get good news. And um, uh, there was a question brought up at our budget meeting about what 
what is being done at the PAC. And we found out the other day that um, Kate received a $36,000 grant um, to help to help fund the PAC, which is awesome. And then she also sent um, a four page list of the things that they've been doing at the PAC that I will send out to everybody. Um, and I, I know that Allison Williams would like to talk about this too because she's the um, representative for the village board on the PAC advisory board. So I'll let yeah. you take over. Yeah, I mean, not much to really add, but um, it's been very difficult to find funding or grants or anything because it's a non-independent, she said, um, it's excluded from most funding options due to its non-independent nature and affiliation with both a school district and a governmental entity. So that is making it very difficult. We get excluded a lot of the times for grants um, but through the state of Wisconsin, um, what is it called? COVID-19 Live Music and Entertainment Grant Program. Uh, that's where we were um, able to lock in a grant of about 36,000. Um, and that is to help with PPE expenses, lost revenues, really kind of anything and, and, and anything helps at this point. Um, there is a potent 2021, there will hopefully be some action back at the PAC, obviously limited, um, depending on, um, obviously seating as well as people coming and things like that. But we are hopeful that, um, in the coming months, we should hopefully get something, uh, going back on over at the PAC. So. Fingers crossed we don't hit a major snag or increase in COVID numbers, but um, that grant will be a significant help as well as hopefully getting back um, into some performances in 2021. So, okay. Allison, do you, or being involved in it, do, do you try and get entertainment there and the entertainment does not want to come because of the COVID? So there's, Yes, um, we are obviously trying. I should also add that I was appointed to this board right before COVID hit. So I have actually not been able to really go to a meeting because basically everything shut down and there was really nothing um, to do at that point. But um, there are a lot of uh, performers pushing their dates and choosing not to travel as well as if figuring out the the plans for how many can we have what if people don't show day of what if people want to buy day of all those potential scenarios of you don't want to oversell a venue because we can only fit 25 percent capacity or whatever it may be so there's a host of issues um and i mean sometimes even if we did have someone if the state locks down or there's other things you know that there's a lot of roadblocks, I would say, that come up in all different areas. Okay, thank you. Well, Allison, isn't it also if you get only bring in 25 percent, a lot of the groups you're not going to make any money. You're, you're going to lose you're gonna money lose. on them. Yeah. So, unless we can get a sponsor, and then you know, there's there, and sometimes we can get a sponsor, but then it, there's a whole yeah. whole host of things to take into consideration um, when when scheduling. So. And it's one thing maybe if it's a venue the size of the Rush Center, but I mean, we haven't seen the Rush Center really do anything. We haven't seen really events anywhere, um, you know. So if the bigger events aren't doing it and haven't figured it out, you know, we're, we're trying to also figure out what's best for us. Yeah, Broadway is still shut down, so. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Allison, there you know, a... I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, go ahead. I was just wondering how long the grant goes for. Does it have to be expended in a certain amount of time? It does not say. Um, it, it, it doesn't say. It just says due to lost revenues, PPE, all of, all of those types of expenses. We might not have had a ton of PPE um, because we haven't really been open, um, but for future and, and things like that. So I think it's just really to cover um, I don't know what fiscal year it has to be applied to, 2020 or 2021. Okay. 
Was there a, a question a couple meetings ago, a couple months ago? Um, and without knowing it right now, I'm not, not going to name names, but somebody on the staff at the PAC uh, got a pretty nice raise. Am I remembering that right or not? That wasn't that the question that kind of triggered this whole thing, uh, this yeah. agenda item off? Well, I think the, uh, I, don't know I, I had raised the question as that relates to other park and rec venues cutting back on um, employee hours and uh, that type of thing during the, the COVID situation. And uh, I was concerned that uh, the PAC did not do that from what I could tell. Um, and I've got some more questions, but I'm not gonna ask them tonight. That's for another venue. Okay. Yeah, no, it wasn't that. It was, okay. I. That's why I didn't wanna name any names because- um, Yeah, I mean- I thought that's what kind of kicked off this agenda item. But. And, and something too, I mean, well, this agenda item was added because we just found out that they got it. They just, they just literally got this grant. So that's why it's just more of an announcement to say they were able to finally lock in you know, we have different funding, Greg would know, that we're available to get through different governmental laws that people have put out there for COVID, but the PAC, because it falls into a school district as well as a governmental entity, gets excluded from grants. So she finally found one that was able to apply to the PAC, and so that's why we're just now getting funding during pandemic because of the, the interesting scenario that particularly the Schwabenon PAC is in. Okay. It'd be one thing if it was like the Appleton Performing Arts Center. I'm not quite sure, but they're not, I don't think they're school board owned or, you know, village owned or anything like that. So their um, relief type of funding is in a different area than what our funding would be in. So is this, is this grant part of the uh, COVID-19 relief? Yes. Package. Okay. There's so a, well, at, at some point it turns into a loan. Um if 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 they're not um relieved of it, you know, applying to get relief from it. I I don't if it's the same as the other other small businesses. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not sure. I just know it's called the Live Music and Entertainment Grant Program. Okay. It's, so it's something you, it's a, it's we're not, gonna want to find out. Yeah, but I don't think it's part of state funding. Okay. It's a grant program specific, but I don't think it's like CARES Act or, I mean, we can find out the specifics, but I don't right. think it's like the PPE loans or what those things are called where it's truly the loan. I don't know if it falls into that bucket. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, we'll move on. 10F. <laughs> Action regarding the assignment of the Capital Credit Union Stadium Lease Documents from Big Top Ashwabnan LLC slash Green Bay Baseball LLC to Boomerang Stadium Holdings LLC slash Boomerang Baseball LLC. So I'm sure everybody saw this in the paper that um, Big Top has sold the Green Bay Booya to Boomerang Baseball. And um, it's exciting. That's a very exciting thing for the village. Um, so I will let Aaron, <clears throat> Tony. And just to follow up, uh, this agenda item is a series of assignment documents as part of the original lease between the village uh, and Big Top Baseball uh, concerning the operation of Capital Credit Union Park. Uh, there was a master lease as well as a sublease with the Northwoods League with respect to the baseball team. These documents uh, on the agenda tonight are an assignment of that lease uh, to Boomerang Baseball uh, and the new um, owners of the Green Bay Booyah as part of uh, their transaction. Uh, they need to obtain the village's consent uh, under the terms of our lease uh, to assign that, and that's what this agenda item is for. Uh, so with that, uh, any other particulars, I would defer to, to Big Top uh, or Boomerang's representatives that may be, uh, uh, that are here tonight and, and may wish to comment. Okay, anybody have questions? 
Are there any changes in the assignment from the previous documents with the previous uh, entity that we had the uh, agreement with? No, it's simply assigning uh, the original lease and the subsequent amendments. Okay, thank you. Would anybody like to hear from Big Top? I, I would be very interested to know if anything is uh, changing going forward with the team and everything. So, so yeah, why don't you guys come forward? Well, hello. Uh, I'm uh, Vern Stenman uh, with uh, Big Top, um, and uh, I can just kind of talk about the past. And I, I do thank you for the opportunity to come up quickly and and uh, on behalf of my business partner Connor Kaloya and, and uh, our vice president uh, John Fonta, who will be staying on uh, to operate the team, and has been with uh, with us here in Ashwaubenon since we started on day one, uh, and will continue to be here for a long time. Um, I think I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I think it's just a little bit over three years ago that we started the discussion uh, with the village and, and Mary and Aaron and, and their staff uh, and the entire board. Uh, to pursue this idea that we've been working on for a long time, uh, you know, in, in, in Green Bay. Um, and really quickly, you shared our vision. Uh, we built upon it, I think, and, and created a pretty amazing asset, hopefully, uh, for this community for a long time to come. Um, it was not our original intent to get to this point uh, of, uh, of selling the franchise this early on in our uh, operation of it. Um, long story short, family really drove uh, the, the pursuit uh, of the possibility of doing it at this point. Uh, and, and really equally, the right person uh, coming in. Uh, we have so much respect for the village and, and the opportunities you've given us as a business uh, that we were not going to uh, put this in the hands of someone uh, that wasn't going to just, uh, wasn't going to not, to not only sustain uh, what we had already built, but we wanted to turn it over to someone that we really honestly felt could make it better uh, and then continue to invest in, in the facility and in the community and uh, make baseball and the associated events that are outside of baseball uh, an even bigger and more important uh, part of this community for years to come. And when we found out that Mark was interested, Mark, Mark Skogan and, and Boomerang and his group uh, in acquiring the team, we literally couldn't, uh, imagine a, a better fit, uh, a better buyer. He played college baseball. He understands the community part of things. Uh, he lives here. This is home. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, the village, the team, the stadium, uh, all, all of our partners, our employees, uh, this is about as positive uh, of an outcome as we can imagine. And we, we feel great to be able to bring it to you here tonight. And again, thank you for your consideration. I have Brian Stenzel here with me from from uh, Boomerang and, and representing Mark Skogan here tonight, and he can answer better your questions about the about the future. But uh, from our perspective, we think it's we think it's very bright. Thank you, Vern. Yes, my Brian. name is Brian Stenzel, okay. um, Vice President of Boomerang Management, uh, representing Mark Skogan and the ownership uh, moving forward. And to answer your question, our plan coming into it is we plan to keep uh, all the staff that's on board. We've met with them all very excited about this group of people. Um, they're an outstanding group. We kind of laid out some of our, our thoughts of continuing with the, uh, the excellence that's been put on at the stadium to this point and some of our ideas moving forward. And we are definitely on the same page with the staff. Um, we we want to bring a lot of good quality entertainment, not only just Booyah Baseball, but other outside events, rentals, Etc. and keep the uh, uh, stadium as busy as possible. Excellent. Thank you. I have a question on um, the synergy. Um, I saw that there's some of the same people on the Epic Event Center that are there. Are, they, are the, some of the same staff going to work the baseball field as well as the Epic Center? And is there any synergy between the two as far as events or activities? Sure. Good plans? question. Um, I will be overseeing both properties, but other than that, it'll be pretty separate entities. Um, the Booyah staff will be in charge of the events and stuff at Booyah Stadium. There is an epic uh, event center general manager and entertainment manager there. Uh, there may be some sharing of uh, staff at times, um, the part-time staff, concessions, bartending kind of thing. And there may be some cross-promotion of, of 
concerts. Um, you know, we may have the Booyah Stadium uh, rent out the facility for a concert that Epic would produce. But in essence, they're two separate organizations with me and Mark Skogan really being the only ones overseeing both of them. Thank you. Vern, when you came to us uh, and uh, proposed a team here in Ashwaubenon, and how many teams did you have at that time? Uh, that, we had four, four Northwoods League teams. All right, so by selling this one off, how many teams you're going to have left then? So we sold our, our team in Wisconsin Rapids uh, about a year ago, uh, a little bit less than a year ago. And so after uh, this transfer is complete, we'll have the team in Kenosha, uh, the Kingfish, and the team in Madison, the Mallards. The Mallards, okay. Okay. You intend on keeping them? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's all I had. I knew you had more than uh, a couple teams. So. And for the record, too, we'll continue to operate the soccer team the uh, Green Bay Voyagers that will be uh, calling, you know, Capital Credit Union Park uh, home. Uh, and so we will still have a, uh, an operation happening here uh, in Ashwaubenon as we, as we go forward with the soccer side. You're keeping the soccer for yourself? Yes, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. very good. Um, do we need a motion here, I guess? Yep, <clears throat> yes, we do. Um, all right, I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to, where do I go here? All right, I'll make a motion to uh, the stadium lease documents from the big top, uh, Ashwaubenon LLC, Green Bay Baseball LLC to Boomerang Stadium Holding LLC slash Boomerang Baseball, LLC. And I will second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to do the assignment of the Capital Credit Union Stadium lease. Everybody understands? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, 10G, action regarding the First Amendment to tax increment incremental financing developers performance agreement between the village of Ashwabnan and Redu Homes Inc. for Alden Station. Okay, Aaron. Okay, the uh, requested amendment to the development agreement uh, really is meant to uh, realign the project along with the, uh, uh, the current timeline that we're working with. Uh, the actual construction uh, was delayed a little bit due to some additional contamination on the site. Uh, as well as uh, some delays we dealt with FEMA. Uh, when COVID hit, they put a halt to their review process that we initially had planned on uh, concluding in June. Uh, it got pushed back until the end of October. So as a result of that uh, construction, everything else got delayed a little bit. So the amendment is meant, like I said, to kind of recalibrate the timeline along with the uh, realities on the ground. And it also incorporates the language uh, that the Village Board looked at uh, a couple months ago maybe a month ago, I forgot the number of meetings we've had, uh, regarding the uh, pedestrian bridge and the uh, coordination and cooperation with uh, Redu Homes on the eventuality of, of getting uh, a dock location uh, on that property as well. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Uh, and also Ryan Redu is in the audience. If you have any questions for him. Aaron, what is the irrigation system they're referring to? Is that for lawn watering or for the pond or what is that exactly? That'd be for the lawns. Um, there's efficiency certainly with trying to put an irrigation system in uh, at the beginning of the process. Uh, if you're a repairing owner, you do have the ability under state law to utilize Fox River water uh, for irrigation systems. So we're working through that process along with the, uh, the dock uh, at the same time. We just have to make sure that that those two processes don't in any way interfere with uh, the potential you know, discussion we're having right now regarding the pedestrian bridge across uh, Ashwaubenon Creek. Anybody have questions? So this uh, development agreement extends the development timeframes. Does it have any increased liability for the village? No, it does not. It increases it for one year. Um, basically what it does, it uh, I guess what, what we're seeing based upon conversations with, with Ryan and his staff is that the uh, sales are actually are doing very well. Uh, so 
I would say the uh, timeline in the development agreement is worst case scenario in that they're held to those timelines. Um, I think things are progressing much better than uh, what are in the timeline right now. So it benefits them to accelerate it just as it helps us out too. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, sir. So how many of them are sold currently? Um, I'll defer to, uh, to Ryan on that. Beautiful. Just state your name and address for the record, please, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ryan Redu, Redu Homes, 2585 South Broadway. So um, I maybe I'll come back to your question just short, shortly. Yeah. I mean, basically things have been going great there. I appreciate working with the staff and the, the board and the project. And yes, the sales have kind of taken off as fast as, as fast as we could imagine. And we've actually not done a lot of marketing on purpose because we can't keep up with the construction end of it. So I think I have good problem. Uh, ten of the first twelve units sold. So we got units that we haven't purchased the land yet, and kind of in the hopper already. As soon as I can get framers and contractors on there, we're we're really moving along really well. Yeah. Okay. So, right. Excellent. My dad took a drive down there the other day, Ryan. He worked at Schneider for thirty-five years, and. He said it looks a little different than when he used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's co it's really coming together yeah, really well. The only struggle we're having right now is we have no power and gas. So if you drive past there on the weekend, I got a generator that's been running 24 seven for three and a half weeks now. But so hopefully we're on the home stretch on that part of it. But yeah. Um, yeah. so if I could just the, the only thing I was going to uh, talk to the board about just was that I'd like to, you know, please try to continue to work on that, uh, the irrigation system and the dock part of it and um, along with the, the bridge. Um, obviously we're happy to get the project realigned and we know that you guys are under constraints and we don't wanna mess with that schedule. But I would just ask at some point if uh, things stretch out that I might wanna come back and just see if we can move that process along because we do have people that are um, looking for that dock as an amenity. Um, and at the beginning of this whole project, we. Uh, we talked about whether that the trail would be an easement on land that we would purchase or the village would purchase. And I guess through the through the you know process again, I was fully aware of how we how we did it. Didn't think it was an issue, and now this is kind of an unforeseen circumstance on our end too. So, so again, happy with everything that's going along. Just to ask that in the future, you know, we tr continue to try to work together. So, but excellent project. We're very happy with it. So, yeah, yeah. Just just for any of the board members. Um, in case you don't know, um, we, we have put in for grants for the bridge and we have to be the owner of the outlet when we're putting in for the grants. So that's, that's what we have to work through first, so. What, what you're really saying, Mary, is we gotta work through the bridge and get that approved before we can approve a dock. Correct. With, which, which they are looking to, Correct. to do. Is that gonna hold up their irrigation? I will let Aaron answer that. So both the uh, the dock and the irrigation are subject to what are called riparian rights. Uh, so basically to have a dock and or an irrigation system, you have to have land uh, up against the water body. Um, so at this point, the village is a riparian owner because we have outlot five that snakes along the entire frontage uh, of the river. So we are trying to figure out some ways to uh, incorporate the homeowners association uh, as a riparian owner uh, with the village. But again, we need to make sure that whatever we do in that aspect doesn't create any issues for us uh, in terms of the grant applications uh, for the bridge. Okay. 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 If there's no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. I'd uh, make a motion to uh approve the first amendment to the tax incremental financing developers performance agreement between the village of Ashwabanon and Redu Homes Incorporated for Alden Station as presented. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Oh, sorry, who seconded? Tracy. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the amendment to the TIF developers performance agreement with the village and Redu Homes for Alden Station. Everybody understands? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Keep, keep going on those homes. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> okay. 10H, consider, discuss, and act on resolution number 12-1-20, vacation carry forward policy exception. We um, have an issue with uh, 
the whole wonderful COVID again and um, some vacation time. So I will let Joel explain all of that. Yeah, but the resolution 120 is more of just a formal process approving an exception to the village's current personnel manual. Uh, within the personnel manual, we do not have the ability to carry forward more than 40 hours or one week of paid vacation time uh, for general employees. There are exceptions within uh, the personnel policies for public safety, but for general village employees, we do not have that, that ability. So this resolution more or less will provide an exception to that rule, albeit a temporary exception, just given the nature of the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the reason why this resolution or request is being brought forward to you is that we have a handful of employees uh, that may have more than 40 hours of vacation that has been accrued over the year and that they have been unable to take that time off, primarily related to job duties and requirements associated from COVID-19 and some of the limitations that, that it's created. A few examples of that could be our, our clerk office who has been diligently involved in four very busy elections uh, and then couple of the, the sequence of events and the time that they would have to be present to handle absentee balloting and election day responsibilities as well as the statutory mandates after election of recording and reporting results. They would have a period of weeks four times a year where they would not be available to take vacation. Couple that with any quarantine requirements and things like that, if they've had contact exposures, they may have been out of work for 14 days, albeit not on vacation uh, for that. And so the, the work piles up and they're unable to take that time off. And so um, administration felt it was appropriate to provide this one-time exception primarily related to that COVID uh, requirement. So there's a few uh, conditions as a part of the resolution, as you'll see. Again, this will allow up to two regular weeks. Right now, our policy currently only allows one. Um, in order for an employee to receive that accumulated carryover, they need to uh, request that in writing to the department head by January 4th. And that just kind of creates a timeline sequence for them to get the re uh, request to them. Department heads will have discretion as to whether they want to recommend uh, that request to the village manager and village president. And it should be noted that the intent here is that if an employee was unable to take time off because of COVID or some type of condition resulting in COVID, that those would be the, the, the situations where a department head would likely recommend that carryover. If it was just simply because an individual had to cancel their cruise because they didn't wanna be stuck on a cruise ship um, out in the middle of sea, and that was the reason why they canceled their vacation, that may not be a reason why it, it, it would get recommended for approval. Those items will come to my office, of which then I will compile those requests, and then ultimately the village president will have discretion as to whether to approve those requests. Again, a singular exception. Uh, it's just for the calendar year 2020 to be carried forward into 2021. In the event that that employee is unable to use that vacation time, uh, unless uh, directive by the board, that vacation time in 2021 would expire. So at the end of 2021, if they don't use that additional week, unless further action is taken by the board, they would again lose that week. Uh, no significant financial uh, uh, detriment to this carryover because there's no payout requirement as part of that, uh, albeit there is a loss of productivity because there's another possibly 40 hours that that employee could be off of work on paid leave in the next calendar year. So with that, I'd be able to uh, be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Joel, just to simplify it, they can carry over 2020 into 2021. It has to be used up by the end of 2021. Correct. Okay. And they carry all over whatever they accrued the whole time of 2020, or do they lose anything? They could potentially lose more. They by by policy they can currently carry over 40. Through this resolution, they could carry over an additional 40. So a, t a cumulative total of 80 hours. Say the employee has uh, 120 hours of vacation time accrued yet they would lose 40 hours of that vacation time because they would not be able to carry over their full balance, okay. only the 80 hours. Joel, what's the exposure? How many, what are we, how many people are we talking? 
Um, I did ask Greg to kind of try to run a report. It was a little difficult to get that report. Uh, we an anticipate based on looking at the individual records, there could be a, a, a half a dozen to a dozen employees that may request that. Uh, we do know over the next two weeks, we have a series of employees that have significant time off. And so there could be 40 or 80 hours that they're gonna be, be cutting from that. So uh, I think the exposure is pretty limited. And beyond that, it, it certainly is going to be the discretion of the department head and ultimately the president to make that approval happen. Okay, thank you. Joel, I can jump in here also. Uh, what, Public Works, we had brought this up as a discussion topic a couple months ago because we were we were seeing a concern. We, we had to call some some guys in that were on vacation, calling them back in because we had a couple of exposures out there. But uh, with the the lack of snow so far this year, uh, the month of December, we've been able to let guys, uh, more guys off on vacation. So we've been been able to whittle, whittle away at those numbers. Um, just going through, and, and Greg's correct in that um, in our current, in our, our vacation system, it doesn't show what's being taken through the end of the year. But through the end of the last pay period here, um, we had one one person in the in the neighborhood of sixty hours. So you're talking half of that forty hour extension. Um, in the utilities, there's nobody over the forty hour limit. So uh, we've seen it where it's it's dramatically de declined here over the last couple of weeks, which has been a good thing, and it's been because of the the weather. So if we can um, keep that for another couple of weeks, we should be in good shape on on public works utilities end of things. Weather and probably more uh, people took off for deer hunting maybe than in the past. <laughs> By the look of the sad faces and not much venison showing up around Village Hall, I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. You did a good job this year controlling the weather, Doug. Yeah. I can say in my HR world and all of the emails that I get to kind of stay up to date on everything, this is a very common issue in a lot of companies. Um, I know even my company is facing it and we discussed it today actually so and, and what we're going to do. Um, so I know this is a practice a lot of companies are making exceptions to so um, I am in support of it. Um, if there's no further discussion I'll make, make, a, make mo a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 12-01-20 vacation carry forward policy exception. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 12-01-20. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, 10-I, possible discussion and action on license and permit application language to background checks. All right, this item is a follow-up to a previous discussion at Public Works and Protection regarding the language contained on our permit applications for licenses and permits uh, concerning uh, background checks. Uh, there was a discussion, as you may recall, on generalized guidelines on how the chief uh, would evaluate uh, applications and, and consider uh, applicants' background checks. Uh, what this proposed language uh, that is set forth in the uh, green sheet, so to speak, uh, sets forth some language to be changed on the application to make it more clear for the applicants to understand what they need to uh, basically disclose or list as part of the application process for their license or permit. The sheet uh, lists out the current language as well as the new proposed language, uh, which talks about arrest conviction records for any felony, misdemeanor, operating under the influence, criminal traffic, or non-traffic local ordinance violation, and that all offenses must be listed and all charges that were part of a plea agreement still must be listed on the application. Uh, also contains a link uh, to the CCAP uh, Wisconsin Circuit Court Access Program website so that applicants can look up uh, for detailed information and list as part of their application. So this is uh, just some proposed language to clean up as a result of previous discussion on guidelines pertaining to background checks. And I can touch on it. I was the one that um, kind of, I don't wanna say came up with this language, but um, I know 
the the office does a really good job at telling applicants what they're supposed to do, what they're supposed to fill out. Um, but we all know people don't always listen the greatest or read the greatest. And I know if something is missed minor, you know, we go back to them and say, hey, you know, can you can you add this? But I'm hoping that if we clarify this and, and really put it out there and if they after seeing this and we even tell them where you can go to to look at your record you know um there's hopefully going to be a lot less back and forth hopefully for the clerk's office as well as the chief um and it's going to make denying an operator license i think on our behalf a little easier as well um because I didn't know I was supposed to list it. That's not an option anymore. Failure to do so, failure to list something, it's right in front of you. If you can't read the directions to fill this out, I don't know if I want you selling alcohol in Ashwabana. Um, so that's kind of the, the reasoning behind this language, kind of um, calling it right out, list everything, and, and that's the expectation. So um, that was, kind of the reasoning behind the language, um, but obviously open to discussion if anyone has anything. It seems to be well done and to the point, and I, like you said, it, it, it gives you everything you need to, to do to fill out the form if you, if you read it and you, you take counsel from our, our staff, so I think it's well done. Uh, I agree. We had a big discussion on that at Public Works. Uh, Chief, you got anything to add to it? You're the one that looks at those apps right away. Uh, I think it's just a matter of people not reading it or understanding it maybe, but do uh, you have anything to say on it, uh, Chief? Well, I think that you guys covered it pretty well. Um, the main point is, is the clarity on what they're supposed to put down and the fact that we've given them information where they can find it. Uh, so they can't use that excuse, and it does give you uh, a better guideline to say that maybe people didn't understand it. It's spelled out pretty clearly. Um, it covers all the all the information that I need to make a determination. So hopefully it will um, reduce some of the back and forth as Allison said. All right, if there's no other questions, I'll move to approve the proposed license and permit application. Background check language. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the license and permit application language for the background checks. Any more discussion? I just have one question. Um, the statement where it says non-traffic local ordinance, vi ordinance violation, is the term local referring to just local like here, or is it saying any municipality that has a local ordinance and you have a violation, whether it's in Green Bay, Ashwaubenon, De Pere, would be what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, that refers to municipal citations. So anywhere. not Not a state citation. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number 11, items for next agenda. If you have anything, give the office a call. Patrick, you're on. During the meeting, the Village Board of the Village of Ashwaubenon may convene in a closed session pursuant to A, Wisconsin Statute Section 19.851C for considering the employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee, including a Village of Ashwaubenon employee's request for leave of absence over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. B, Wisconsin Statute Section 19.851F for the purpose of possible discussion and action on considering a Village of Ashwaubenon employee's request for leave of absence and financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons except where parens B applies, which if discussed in public would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data or involved in such problems or in investigations. C, Wisconsin Statute Section 19.851G for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel concerning strategy with respect to Keene Ashland LLC litigation in which it is or likely to become involved. The Village Board may thereafter reconvene an open session pursuant to Wisconsin stat Statute Section 19.852 to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. Okay. I'll accept them. Motion to convene into closed session, Madam President. 
Motion to move to go into closed session. Second. Motion and a second to go into closed session. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee Paul. Yes. Trustee Zerbel. Yes. Trustee Krieger. Yes. Trustee Kabaki. Aye. Trustee Fluki. Aye. President Kardoski. Yes. We are in closed session. <laughs>